Hello, welcome to the second and final video for chapter 35. Uh, this one will go over the human eye and vision and how to correct for uh, some problems with vision. Uh, and then color and dispersion. Okay, so the, the problem, this problem deals with, uh, you, might, you might recognize these, uh, these reading glasses that you sometimes see in like CVS or grocery stores or something. Uh, they have a number next to them. Sometimes it says like 150, sometimes 1.50. So we'll, we'll get to understand what these numbers mean in this problem. So I have a problem featuring Grandma Shotwell, her glasses, and what this means. Right. Okay, so um, so vision problems come in two forms. Uh, so I want to separate uh, the two terms and give you some background for this. Two forms. So one is called myopia, and another one is called hyperopia. All right. um, so there are other terms for this. Um, so myopia is also called uh, nearsightedness. And hyperopia is called farsightedness. And the way I remember, so I'm one of these, and the way I remember which one I have is uh, there's a saying called uh, you are what you see. You are what you see. So maybe I'll put this in parentheses. Um, so in other words, nearsighted people can see near, they can't see far. Um, so actually this is just a mnemonic to help me remember this. Nearsighted people, maybe they can see, maybe, maybe they can see near, maybe they can't, they can't see far away. Uh, so if you're myopic, you can't see objects that are far away. Uh, and if you're hyperopic, you can't see up close. Okay, um, so we'll see uh, what this means in terms of people's eyeballs. Um, but my so um, probably if you're watching this and you're in, in your college age uh, and you're w one of these two, you're probably myopic. Maybe you're both, but but you're probably myopic. Uh, you can see up near, but you can't see far away. Uh, so this is more common. This one on the left is more common in younger people younger folk. Uh, and this one is, uh, this hyperopia is, is, becomes common as you age. Uh, and if you become hyperopic as you age, which everybody does, we'll, we'll see a table later, um, then it's called, then the, that affli affliction is called uh, presbyopia. So it's just the hyperopia as a, a because of age. I have no idea how to spell this. Presbyopia. It might be close enough. All right, so let's uh, let's continue this table and see what's going on with the eyeball for both these cases. Right. Um, maybe that's not big enough. Okay, eyeball. So uh, so at the so, so I, I imagine an eyeball, and we're going to be looking at something uh, to the left here. So the eye is pointing to the left. Um, what this part is called right here are, well, the main refractive elements um, are the cornea uh, and the lens. So th these are the things that will take light rays. Uh, so from an object, you have light rays coming uh, that are diverging away from the, the object. And your eyeball in these, um, at the front of the eyeball will converge these things. So this light ray will go like this, this light ray will go like this. Now, ideally, these light rays will meet at the back of the eyeball uh, called the retina. So ideally, you would ha your, eye your eyeball would be able to have the correct focal length such that whatever you're looking at uh, focuses on the retina. So in order to be able to see objects that are a bunch of different distances, your eyeball needs to adjust its fo focal length in order to image, to, to make sure that the image uh, forms right on the retina right there. Um, so a myopic person will have objects that they can't see, 
So objects that are far away will focus too soon uh, in front of the retina. So before, before these light rays uh, get to the retina, they are, they've already crossed, and your eye can't decrease the focal length enough to, to get it back here. Or really, your, your eyeball can't squeeze enough so that, these light ray, so that the retina will meet the, uh, the image. So uh, the reason this, this, this uh, picture is helpful is that it tells us what we need. So uh, people who are myopic need diverging lenses. Diverging lenses. So that will spread out these uh, light rays right here. So notice how if we had, if we put a diverging lens right here, uh, so that'll diverge the light rays a little bit and so the, uh, the image will form a little bit later and we want it to form right on the retina, right? Um, Okay, so, so you might want to play with this. If you have glasses, you might want to, and you, ha you happen to have a laser beam or something, or some sort of uh, parallel light that you can see. If you shine it through the glasses, you'll notice that the light will diverge. You know, you can, you'll definitely be able to see that you have a diverging lens. So you might be able to guess what the picture looks like for people who are hyperoptic. Um, so again, eyeball right here. Again, we have light rays that are uh, spreading out right here, and so for a hyperoptic optic people, for a hyperoptic person, um, these light rays will converge a little too far out past the retina. So here we need converging lenses to scoot this up, to scoot this towards the retina. Okay, so over here, right, need converging lenses. So you could have both problems. So I mean, this you are what you see is just a way of remembering it, but you could have both problems and you need bifocals. You need both a diverging and a converging lens, depending on what you're looking at. Um, okay. So your book gives some pictures of this, vision defects and their corrections. So we'll, we'll come back to, to what your book covered before. Your book gives some nice pictures of this as well. Um, and they have these terms called near point and far point. So let's, let's, uh, explore those a little bit. Um, so we'll have to explore those terms, we'll have to explore power of a lens, but then once we have those two things then we can look at this example problem that I introduced before. Right. Um, okay, so near point and far point. Uh, so I'll just say a uh, normal person, <laughs> quote unquote, uh, a normal person can see, so in other words a, a person who's uh, considered to not have any, any vision defects and not need glasses. A normal person can see uh, anything. So in other words, they can focus their, they can, their eyeball can focus any object uh, between 25 centimeters at the very closest. So 25 centimeters is almost a foot. So imagine a foot in front of you, a little bit closer than that. If you put your hand any closer, or put, put an object any closer than that, you're not expected to be able to focus it. So th there's a certain point where just, you know, nobody can really focus. You're, you're so close. Uh, and normal people are also, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm putting S equals to remind you that it's an object located at these, these positions. Uh, and, an, and an object should be able to be infinitely far away, and someone should be able to focus and see the object. Okay, so object's very far away. Um, so that's where these terms come from. This 25 centimeters is called the uh, normal near point. So these are normal values for the near point and the far point. Okay, so someone who can't see far away has a far point that's less than infinity. Okay, so a myopic person will have something wrong with this, and a hyperopic person person will be will have something wrong with their near point. Their near point will be um, too far away. They won't be able to see objects up close. Okay. Uh, okay. So so maybe I'll so the, the statement I just made, let me let me sum it up in a table. Um, so a myopic person uh, has a far point, S far, less than infinity. 
they need glasses or contacts that take so think about what you need the glasses to do. We want to be able to see something infinitely far away. But the farthest away we can see clearly is the far point. So we need glasses that will take an object at infinity and put it at the far point. So they need glasses that take uh, an object at infinity. Uh, and so, so the object at infinity has uh, and puts it and has let me finish <laughs> let me start this sentence over again. They need glasses that take an object at infinity uh, and puts the image uh, at the far point. Okay. Uh, a hyperopic person. I keep wanting to say hyperoptic. I think it's just hyperopic. It's really hard for me to say for some reason. A hyperopic person, uh, there's a problem with their near point. So a hyperopic person has a near point uh, bigger than 25 centimeters. And so it's considered normal to be able to see something 25 centimeters in front of you. So we want to take an object that's at 25 centimeters and put it at the near point. Um, so let's, let's write that down. So they need converging glasses. So by the way, the, here the key is that uh, any glasses that will do this will be diverging in this case, and any glasses that will uh, fix this person's vision will be converging. They need converging glasses that take an object at 25 centimeters and places this object, places the image uh, at the near point, the person's real near, near point. Okay. So it's helpful to, to use these sentences and draw a ray diagram, which you learned uh, from previously in, in uh, chapter 34, actually. Uh, draw a ray diagram to encapsulate what's going on in these sentences in order to make sense of, of uh, what glasses each person needs. Okay. Uh, one last thing before we, before we do the example is um, we could talk about a, the power of a lens. So power of a lens. Now, I want to warn you right away, this is not watts. Okay, this, this has nothing to do with energy at all. This just has to do with how strong a lens is. So strength of a lens, nothing to do with energy. So you got to be really careful with using the word power here. So power of a lens is 1 over the focal length. The shorter the focal length, the stronger that lens is, right? You have a really strong lens that will take light from infinity and bend it really quickly. Whereas if you have a weaker lens, uh, it'll just bend the light a little bit. And so the focal point will be way out here rather than really close. So the shorter the focal length, the stronger the lens. Um, so the power of a focal length is one over, uh, the, sorry, the power of a lens is one over the focal length. And this could be positive or negative. Um, so just like the focal length is positive for Converging lenses, negative for diverging lenses. Same thing with the sign for the for this power. Um, so we often talk about power uh, more often than the focal length. And so power, the SI unit of this is one over meters. So in the context of optics and and vision correct, correction, we call one over a meter a diopter. Diopter, so capital D. So for example, um, so I my prescription, um, not grandma shot well, but baby shot well. Um, my prescription is negative one point two five. So it's negative. So so this is my prescription, and prescriptions. Uh, the number of your prescription is actually the diopter. 
the number of diopters. So it's not the number of meters, but one over, but this number, when you take the reciprocal, that's the focal length of your, of your lenses. Um, so what this means is that the focal length is one over this. So that means I'm wearing lenses that are one over that. So one over minus 1.25 diopters. Um, so it looks like that's five fourths, this becomes four fifths. So negative 0 0.8 meters. So I'm wearing diverging lenses, where the focal length of my diverging lenses has magnitude 0.8 meters, or 80 centimeters. Okay. So I am, because I'm wearing the, diver, the diverging glasses, you know that I'm myop, myopic. Um, I'm, I'm nearsighted. I can see up close, but not far away. Okay, okay let's, give, uh, let's give this problem a shot. Right, so the, the original problem with grandma shot well. Okay, let's go back and see what we have. Grandma shot well wears plus 1.50 diopter reading glasses. All right, so, um, so yeah, this is the number. So sometimes they, they just leave out this, this decimal point right here and they'll just put 150. So if you see glasses in the store and they're hundreds in the hundreds rather than, you know, one or two or three, then uh, it's implicit, it's implied that there's a decimal place right, right there. On the, the yeah, the, <laughs> you'll never see reading glasses that are over 10 diopters. Right? It's always one or two or three point something, or zero point something. Um, so, so in other words, even if you didn't see the, di the diopters, you would know what that meant. It means if, if it was plus 150, and that means plus 1.50 diopters. Um, okay, what condition does she have? That, that's the first question here. Um, so Grandma Shotwell wears, uh, so I'll, I'll write Grandma Shotwell for G, GS for Grandma Shotwell. GS is hyper opic. So in other words, she's farsighted. Uh, and you will be too in the future. Let me, <laughs> um, it's kind of depressing actually. There's... Oh, your book doesn't have it. Most books have a table uh, that show um, the your near point versus age, uh, and it's it's really depressing. It's like so so for your age and your near point, uh, there's like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So your near point is probably better than than normal at 20. You know something like 15 centimeters instead of 25 centimeters. At 30, maybe that's normal, 25 or 30 centimeters. At 40, it becomes, you know, 30 or 40 centimeters. It, it's still pretty, pretty low. Um, but somewhere between 40 and 50, it, it really jumps up to like 50 centimeters. And by the time you're 60, it's like 200 centimeters. So remember, this is the closest thing that you can see clearly. Um, so if you, so people generally need reading glasses by 50, you know, and that's definitely by 60. Um, so it's a downer for aging. <laughs> uh, so it's not too shocking that Grandma Shotwell is, uh, is farsighted. So, so presbyopia. So th this is presbyopia quantitatively. Uh, so Grandma Shotwell is hyperopic. Um, her prescription of plus 1.50 diopters means that the focal length of the lens, which is one over that, is two-thirds. Uh, two-thirds meters. So maybe 0 0.667 meters. Uh, and it's positive. They're converging lenses. She needs converging lenses. Right. Now let's go to the last part. What What is her near point? Okay, where's Grandma Shotwell on this, uh, in this table? So to answer that, we need to go back and think about uh, this statement right here. Right. Hyperopic person... Uh, has some near point, so they need converging lenses that take an object at 25 centimeters and puts the object at the at the at the person's near point. Okay, so here in this, so we can draw a ray diagram, uh, and the, you, you'll start to see why these are so useful. Um, so this is, so let's see, I, I have an object at 25 centimeters. I, I want to sort of draw this to scale. 
Um, so this distance right here is 25 centimeters. This is going to be my object. Um, and then the focal point of this of these lenses are 67 centimeters away, right? I'm looking at this number right here. So 67 centimeters is going to be you know, more than double this. So, so there's a focal point way out here, and there's a focal point way out here. All right. So you can draw this right here. You can draw this right here. And it looks like if we bring both of these back, looks like maybe the image is right here. So notice this will also magnify the image. So if you look in, in those reading glasses, um, your object is magnified and it's not inverted. So, so next time you see those glasses at the store, you know, take a look at them. They, they act like little um, magnifying glasses. Um, so, so an object will appear bigger. So this is our image, and, it, and it's not inverted either. So the image is located at the far point. Okay, so this is the far point. So the magnitude of this, the magnitude of S prime is her far point magnitude, or sorry, near point, sorry, near point. So our lens equation, one over F is equal to one over S plus one over S prime. Uh, we know the focal length of the lens. So one over F is one over this, but remember that's just plus 1.50 diopters. Uh, so 1.50, diopters is equal to 1 over 25 centimeters plus wherever that image is. So this, this equation will help us solve for where that image is. Right. So I'm gonna, just to be consistent with units, I'm going to, instead of 25 centimeters, I'm going to go ahead and put 0.25 meters. So it looks like this is 4. This whole fraction is 4. So 1.5 minus 4 is negative 2.5 diopters is equal to 1 over S prime. Uh, and this means S prime is, um, so instead of 5 halves, it looks like it's 2 fifths. So 2 fifths uh, meters or 40 centimeters. Uh, and the, it's negative right here, right? Let's include the negative. S prime is negative 40 centimeters. So the image is on the same side as the object. That we know because uh, you know, we're looking, so, so we're looking at an object through these lenses, we see an image on the same side as the object, right? We're not, we're not looking at some hologram that's, that's between our eyeball and the glasses, right? We're looking at an, an image that's, you know, only slightly off from, from where the, the object is, um, or definitely on the same side of this. Uh, so the negative isn't, isn't so surprising. The near point of 40 centimeters is a lot smaller than we would expect from this table, right? So, so Grandma Shot was actually doing pretty well. Maybe she had some eye surgery or something, and now she only needs a small correction on top of that. So the near point, Grandma Shot was near point, is at 40 centimeters. So that's bigger than 25 centimeters, which is why she needs the, the reading glasses. Um, so really, this is pretty good. For, for anyone uh, that old, probably they, you know, it's more like plus two and a half or plus three diopters. Um, they need something more like that. Okay, so we're going to get a lot more practice uh, in class with, with other problems. So we're going to skip this magnification section. We're running low on, on time. Um, so no, no telescopes or magnifying um, setups. But, but you, should, you should be able to read this. Uh, you at least have the tools to, to read these sections in case you, you want to learn more about it. There's only one more topic that I want to make sure that we cover, uh, and that is dispersion. Okay. Uh, so if you have light incident on glass, so we're totally changing gears here now. This is not, this is dispersion. Dispersion in color. So nothing to do with lenses anymore. If you have white light, White light is a combination of a bunch of different colors, of different wavelengths. So those colors actually can have a different index of refraction right here at this interface. So red light will bend some amount, you know, there's some n value. So you're used to the, the value of glass having one value of n, like 1.50, your book uses. 
So actually what happens uh, is that your, let's see right here. So depending on the color, so let's focus on um, crown glass. Looks like red, so N for red light, looks like it's 1.5, near 1.52. Um, but it looks like for violet light, well, I'll just use pink here. Well, I guess I got a purplish one. And violet, looks like it's closer to 1.54. So a bigger index of refraction means that we're gonna bend even more towards the normal. So you get all the colors of the rainbow in between these two, uh, these two extremes. You get the whole, whole rainbow here. So, speak, so anytime you get light separating out, whoa, what happened there? Anytime you get light separating out like that, uh, a lot of it is due to a different index of refraction. Um, so the light will disperse. Okay, see how right here the, the violet light is bending more than the red light? Uh, so it's responsible for, for prisms, separating light into rainbows. Uh, responsible for rainbows. So you can actually have the uh, the bounce. So th there's a reflection going on here, but there's a refraction going on when the light is entering the raindrop. And so because of that, you can see a rainbow come out. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. There, there's a small aside at the, at the end of the um, section that has to do with the fact that blue light will scatter more than, than red light. Um, so as light passes through the atmosphere, um, uh, if, the, if the sun is near the horizon, it has a lot of atmosphere to go through, the blue light is going to scatter. Um, in other words, it will it'll shoot off in another random direction, but the red light will, go through that, will get through the atmosphere a little bit uh, easier. So that's why sunsets are, are red. Um, yeah, and that's, so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. So that'll be the end of the topics for, for this class. Uh, bye. <laughs>